happy new year and a new project. I'm going to try and document the progress of this project. That's as far as the design has got at the moment. I'm aiming for a simple double knit mitten. And right now I've made the decision to go with a two color knit pearl cast on rather than a tubular cast on. It'll give me a stronger edge for the mitten, which is important for something you're going to put on and off frequently. And it's also easier to do in the round than a tubular cast on. So I'm trying to resist the temptation of doing a complicated cuff. So I probably am going to stick to a straightforward one, one by one stripe here. Um, I've set up both colors, one on the inside and one on the outside. Um, Let's have a look at the long tail cast on that I used, the knit pearl version. I'm beginning with a slip knot, and although it's long tail, because I've got two colours, I don't need a long tail. So the slip knot is just a temporary measure to hold both yarns, and then I'm going to hold it as if I were doing the slingshot method, and I'm going to do a knit stitch. So I go into the loop and knit. And snuggle. Then I go into the loop from underneath, throw the yarn purlwise, and purl it back as if it were a regular stitch. So up from underneath and into the loop, knit the yarn through and snuggle. Up from underneath, knit the yarn through, sorry, purl the yarn through and snuggle. I don't need to worry about carefully spacing my stitches as I might in a sock top because there's going to be twice as many stitches as usual in this edge. So I'm going to actually make a 40 pair mitten which will have 80 stitches. So I begin by casting on all 80 stitches onto one needle and don't forget we're going to drop the double, double slip knot before we fold it into the round. doing two colour long tail it's very easy to see if you make a mistake. Uh, you always go into the colour you've just got on the needle, the loop, and that way the next stitch will be different colour. And if I were to do that again then I'm going to wind up with two yellows side by side. Drop that off and resume casting on my stitches. Once you've finished casting on the appropriate number of stitches, first of all check that the sequence is correct, everything's looking nice and even. Then I'm going to drop off my double slip knot and I'm only using a partial cast on edge here, but I'll slip the first half of the stitches onto a second needle and I'm making sure my first pair begins with the green and so it should end with the yellow and I'm going to make sure I slip a complete number of pairs onto that needle and now I'm just going to fold it around with the hinge at the left edge. I would use this same method for regular, a regular cast on onto a set of needles. Um, this could also be done onto circu two circulars or I could pull the loop out one long circular here if I chose. Now I'm going to get ready to work the first round and I need to decide uh, which hand is going to hold which yarn. So I'm going to say bright in my right, so I'm going to put my yellow yarn in my right hand. My first stitch is going to be a green knit, so I want it to be very near the needle tip. There's the last stitch I cast on, there's the first stitch of the new round. So I don't want to create any space between the beginning and end, so there's a green knit. Swing the yarns through and make a yellow purl and I'm going to unconventionally rotate my purls. Green knits. The first little bit. It can be fiddly, especially when you're filming it as well. But it gives us the advantage of only 
dealing with two needles at once. And I've done two pairs, I'm going to do another pair onto that needle. I'm only doing a very tiny cast on here. As soon as you've got a couple of stitches on that right hand needle, um, you've got a tiny triangle again but in your work and things become a lot easier. Now back to the real knitting and I'm going to complete this third round. So one, there's my cast on, one, two. So this is round three on the real thing. And I have to go into the stitch so it doesn't twist because I've been using unconventional pearls. So the knits present normally. These stitches made with unconventional pearls present facing the other way on the needle. You become quite accustomed to going into them so they don't twist. I've com completed my third round and there's my slip knot. So I can see that this column is the first column of the round. And now I'm going to start my stripe pattern. So I want to reverse one pair. Then I want to match a pair. Then I want to reverse the colours of a pair. And this will give me an alternating striped pattern. And it always looks a bit odd when you're used to your double knitting coming up with alternating colour stitches. When you do a single column stripe, that's colour change, pair one, colour change, pair two, colour change, pair three. So it's two and two and two, but the twos are not pairs. The pairs are the front colour and the back colour. So we will proceed with this cuff and see where it takes us. <laughs> 